When the core track function was first introduced into Cubase in version 7, I think it would be fair to say it split opinion. Perhaps it didn't split opinion as much as Loop Mash, but nevertheless, core track did make many users immediately see its potential for composition, whilst others by contrast felt it was just a gimmick. That all said, and as time has passed, now that the core track function has been integrated into Cubase for a while, I read the Cubase forums and see it's now pretty much universally appreciated. So that's what we'll look at during this Cubase feature focus course. We'll look at it using it to support our compositions, and to get creative too. I'll start off here with a quick walkthrough how we set it up within a new blank project, so that any new users to Cubase have this information at hand as part of this Cubase Core Track course. I have covered this in another Cubase tutorial, but in case you haven't got that Groove 3 course, or in case you want the information here too, so you have it in one place, I'll quickly go through the setup. I'll only do this the once here though, in this introduction movie. So, from this point on, in the unlikely event you forget how it is set up, just refer back here. Right, first things first then, we'll create an empty new blank project by selecting this option, New Project. I'll select Empty and accept the default locations here, and hit Create. Now, I need to add the chord track and have it linked to AVSTI. This needs to be done because the chord track in itself does not generate any sound. It creates the data that drives something else, and in our setup example here, a VSTI. So it creates the data that drives a VSTI in our case. Therefore, I'll right click to create a new track, and run down to that option there, the sixth one down, add chord track. OK, that's the chord track in place. Now let me just resize this so we can see things a little bit better. OK, now whilst I'm doing this, to reiterate, this chord track doesn't generate sound on its own, so now let's set up an instrument track. I'll right click once more and choose Add Instrument Track, the second option down. From within here, I'll choose a relevant instrument. I'll go for this Piano VSTI, Modart's Piano Tech, although of course you can use any VSTI. I just want to use a simple but effective VSTI at present. Incidentally, if you've not got Piano Tech, check it out. It's not a sample-based VSTI, it's all modelled. Consequently, it has a small installation size of around 20 megabytes. Yes, megabytes, not gigabytes. Anyway, once you have chosen your VSTI, simply click Add Track. OK, we now have Piano Tech loaded up, and on its own distinct track. What we'll do is link the chord track above to this piano. In fact, now I've moved Piano Tech 4 over to the left we don't actually need to view it. This is because it's only going to be the sound source. So I'll close it from view. That's all I'm doing, closing it from view. I'm not uninstalling it. OK, now you don't need to give Piano Tech an image, but I will do for this example. Obviously, I'll choose to give it a piano icon. If you roll your cursor over this left corner, you'll see that square illuminate. By double-clicking on it, you get this track pictures browser. Now I'll just scroll down to find a piano image. There are a couple there, so I'll go for that one and OK it. And it's there. OK, now there's just the one more thing to do at this stage. We need to get Piano Tech and Chord Track communicating with each other. We do it by clicking here on the Chord Track, where it says at the moment, Use Monitored Tracks. Just drop down and choose the option. And of course, there is only one option for me at present, Modart's Piano Tech. OK, now you'll notice this button is engaged, the Audition Chords button. If it's not activated, just click it so it lights up in orange. Once done, you'll be able to hear the chords playing as you create them later. Notice too it illuminates over here in the inspector. You can activate it in either place. Later, I'll talk more about this voicings option. For now, just notice it's set to piano. That's just a coincidence in terms of us having a piano VSTI. If you select here, you'll reveal these three options. Piano, Basic and Guitar from the voicing library. Just leave it on piano for the present time. Right then, that's all set up. But of course, to be able to hear the piano tech sound, soon to be driven by whatever chords we use within the chord track, I need to engage piano tech's monitor button here. OK, it's illuminated to indicate it is on. In parallel with this, as mentioned a moment ago, it's important that this button on the chord track is also engaged, this second one along, so that we can hear the chords. OK, that's the setup complete. Now, we simply need to add some chords to Chord Track that we want it to use to generate and then drive Piano Tech. 
so that we hear our created chords played through the VSTi. To be able to add some chords in, I'll select the Draw tool from up here and initially add in some placeholder crosses where I want the chords to play. I'm not too concerned at the moment where they are. I can always reposition these later. So now then, with these four crosses at these bar positions, I can now modify them and actually state what the chords should be. I'll just deselect the Draw tool and I'm going to get back to this Show Scale option later too. For the moment, to choose a chord name, double click on your first cross and with the resulting chord editor, making sure that you are on the Editor tab rather than the Assistant tab. So now just click on the chord that you want to use. I'll go for this A. Now of course, as you can see, this is an A major chord. I actually want it to be A minor. So I'll come across to the second column and modify A major to A minor. You'll see the chord name indicated here and up here too. You'll probably notice that the chord choices become more complex as you move to the right through these columns. You'll see major, minor, diminished, suspended fourth, suspended second and augmented in the second column. And in the third column, well, you sort of get more into jazz territory. Anyway, once you are happy with the chord, move across to the second cross and choose your next chord. I'll go for D, but I don't want it to be D major. I want to modify this to D minor and further modify by choosing appropriately from the third column. I want this to be D minor seventh. And then for my third cross, well, I'm happy for this to be a G major. And for my last chord, I'm going to make this C major seventh. Now I need to make sure I choose the second option down there to get a major seventh rather than the one above. That would just be a seventh. Okay, now I've just refocused our screen. So now at this point, if I now want to move the position of these chords, it's a simple case of left clicking and dragging to the new position. And because I've got snap activated, the chords snap to bar measures. Notice also, as I move a chord over the previous chord, it splits the previous chord and reduces its length to allow the selected chord to claim that position. After all, we don't want two chords playing simultaneously. Right, let's have a quick listen. Okay then, so that's the process when we want to set up a chord track so that we can create some chords, possibly move them around, repositioning them, and subsequently having these chords drive a VSTi. In our case, a piano VSTi. Right, I'm going to finish up here then for this introductory tutorial, so I'll see you in a moment.